gather this morning and worship the Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord. You died, you said in three 
says the night Jesus was betrayed he took the bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and he said this is my body that's been broken for you take it and eat it in the same manner he took the cup and he blessed it saying this is my blood that shed for the remission of your sins take it and eat it Apostle Paul in the book of Corinthians he writes If anyone in an unworthy manner partake in this communion he brings damnation upon himself This morning let's examine ourselves Let's not partake in this communion to condemn ourselves but let's come to the Lord with a pure spirit with a pure heart the scripture says you got to examine yourself examine your way of life examine the conversations that you have made examine the thoughts that comes to your mind examine your actions are you right with the lord are you in line with the word of god in your behavior in your character in your lifestyle examine everything whether you meditate on the word of god day and night examine your prayer life examine your service to the lord examine yourself we are living in cruel days before the great day of the lord the real love will be shattered people will move in jealousy spirit of hatred malice we are entering into days that trust is lost in families examine yourself before we partake in this communion father i pray that you'll bless this communion this morning you're not calling us to desert us on the way you're calling us to lead us through lord help us fix our eyes on jesus who is the author and the perfecter of our faith that we may run and persevere in this race lord father i pray that you will use every altar worker this morning to serve this communion that we may partake and be a blessing and be blessed because of this communion in jesus name amen church please receive these elements that comes and wait for my instructions that we can partake together
this is the power of Christ in me. Commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ I stand. As we hold these elements in our hands, the body of Christ broken for us. The scripture says, by his stripes we are healed. He was broken, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement that should come upon us, the punishment that should come upon us, came upon him because he took it up on himself. And the wine we are holding in our hands is the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ shed for the remission of our sins. This morning, let's examine ourselves. Am I right before you, Lord? Do I honor your word? Do I honor your people? Do I honor your anointing? The scripture says, They that wait upon the Lord shall receive strength. Let's wait upon the Lord, that his strength be made perfect in our life, that we may follow his footsteps. And remembering this Jesus Christ, let's partake in this communion, the bread and the wine together. Lord is moving in a mighty way and we are able to see the growth of the Lord wherever we go. 
the churches are growing and the ministries are flourishing again. There was a period of dark age where the churches were cold and the anointing was not taken serious. But now I see that the Lord is moving in a way that people of God are taking His word serious to obey His word and to do His will. And this morning, I believe the Lord has a word for us. Turn with me to Hebrews chapter 12. First three verses. We are in the middle of this year, 2017. In another two months, we are going to enter a new season of our ministry as we enter into the 76th year of our ministry. And from then on, in another two months, we are going to complete this year and enter into 2018. So we just have a few more months to complete this year. But I believe the Lord has a plan for us. He has a work. He wants us to move us to the next realm. But are we prepared for the Lord to use us to move to that next level? Am I following the footsteps of the Lord that I once followed? Am I having the thoughts of the Lord Jesus Christ to move on that His goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our life. Many of us do not have the thoughts, the mind of Jesus Christ. But we expect His goodness in our life. How can that happen? So if you want the goodness of the Lord to follow you, we've got to have the mind of Christ. To have the mind of Christ, we've got to fix our eyes on Jesus. And we've got to follow Him. We've got to run our race looking at Him. Hebrews chapter 12, first three verses. Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. Follow Jesus Christ. He is the author and the perfecter of our faith. The scripture says, since we are surrounded by such a cloud of weaknesses, there are many clouds of weakness, there are many weaknesses that are surrounding us. When you look at these weaknesses, we can look at Paul, we can look at Abraham, we can look at Isaac, we can look at Jacob, we can look at Joseph, we can look at Daniel, we can look at Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. They're all weaknesses of the Old Testament who are surrounded for us to watch them. In the New Testament, we can see Apostle Paul, John. We can see Peter, we can see James, we can see the mother of Jesus Christ, we can see all the other weaknesses who have followed us, who have, who have preceded us. They're all weaknesses, but when you start looking at their lives very closely, there are some failures that they have gone through in their lives. That's why there's, the word of God says, though we are surrounded by such a cloud of weaknesses, though we are surrounded by such holy people, though we are surrounded by saints of the past, we've got to fix our eyes on Jesus, the author, who is the perfecter of our faith. Fix your eyes on Jesus and run your race fixing your eyes on Jesus Christ. Many of us are discouraged because we try to fix our eyes on some saint. We try to fix our eyes on some holy people. We try to fix our eyes on some, uh, some leader. But eventually we see some fault in their life and we are discouraged. We don't want to follow anything henceforth. That's why the scripture says, do not fix. They are there for us to take the good things that they have done in this life. They are model for several things. Take those things. But follow Jesus Christ. Fix your eyes on Jesus, who's the author and the perfecter of our faith. 
So when you fix your eyes on Jesus, we once fixed our eyes on Jesus. That's why things were so good to us. We had peace when we fixed our eyes on Jesus. We had joy when we fixed our eyes on Jesus. We had hope when we fixed our eyes on Jesus. When you turn back and see the day that you were baptized, the day you accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, everything was beautiful. Why? Because you fixed your eyes on Jesus. But now where are you? How was your lifestyle? What happened to the peace that you had once? What happened to the joy that you leaped with at one point of your life? What happened to all the good things that you had at one point of your life? What is happening in your life? You're deviated. You're fixing your eyes on something else. The Lord is calling us this year, this month of July. Fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of your faith. That you may not turn to your right, that you may not turn to your left. That you may endure everything that comes your way and you'll keep running and persevering your race. Fix your eyes on Jesus. As we fix our eyes on Jesus, no matter what comes our way, we'll be able to overcome. As we fix our eyes on Jesus, let any betrayal situation come our way. Let any losing situation come our way. Let any valley come our way. We'll be able to go through. Even if ocean has to come before us, we may be able to stand there and look at Jesus Christ and ask him to help us and he will help us. We may go through fire. We may go through waters. Nothing is going to harm us. Why? We have fixed our eyes on Jesus. But today, what is happening? You're not able to go through even one small trial. You're not able to bear one burden. You're not able to go through one situation in life. Why? Because we have not focused on Jesus Christ. We have taken our eyes off Jesus Christ and started to fix on so several other things of this world. The Lord is calling us back to basics. Fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. Though we are surrounded by such a cloud of weaknesses, fix your eyes on Jesus and keep moving forward to see the goodness of the Lord in your life. To see the anointing of the Lord that is going to take you through. The six months that we have ahead of us, I pray that the Lord will motivate us, promote us, use us, that we may enter 2018 and see a mighty move of the Holy Spirit through our life, that we become a witness of the Lord Jesus Christ. God is calling us to pray and seek Him. Today we call our friends not for prayer, we call them to come and gossip. That is the age we are in. The Lord is calling us to basics. Uh, fix your eyes on Jesus. Uh, how was his prayer life? He prayed all night. Uh, he communicated with his father in heaven. And he came down saying, I do the will of the father. Whatever I hear from him, I do it. That's the mindset that we should have this day, this season. Jesus didn't go around finding fault on people. He said, I've come to seek the lost and find them and give them salvation. Today we go around finding fault. The Lord is calling us to basics. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Don't go around pointing at people. Go around to save people that they may inherit the kingdom of God. That is the lifestyle God is calling us to live these days. Fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of your faith. You started this year victoriously. You started this year with many anticipations. You started this year with many things that you wanted to do for the Lord. But now when you turn back and see nothing has happened. Why? So much of failures in our life. Things that we thought is going to happen for good has turned around to be wrong in our life. But now the Lord is reminding us, fix your eyes on Jesus. You'll be able to endure all situations in your life. You'll be able to come through all problems. You'll be able to stand firm and be a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. In Psalm 105 verse 37 we read, He brought them forth with silver and gold, and there was not one feeble person among their tribes. Talking about the Israelites who came from Egypt. When Moses brought the Israelites out of Egypt, the scripture says that there were no feeble people there. There were no sick people among them. The Lord healed them all. There were no poor. There was no poverty in them. It says that they came with silver and gold. They came with wealth. They were slaves. They had nothing of their own. 
everything that belonged to them were snatched by their masters. But when the Lord moved them, when they started to follow Moses according to the direction the Lord gave Moses, when they started to fix their eyes on Jehovah and start moving forward with the words that Moses gave them, I tell you all that things that they that they wanted, they started to gain. I believe the Lord has a plan for each of us. And I pray that His Holy Spirit will move in our life. That we may walk out of the Egypt that we are living in. We will walk out of that bondage that we are enslaved to. That we will walk into freedom that the Lord has in store for us. And we will see the goodness and the mercy and the joy of the Lord. And leap with joy because we have a hope. And that hope is leading us to move forward. The Lord wants to set us free. But we are bound in certain things that we are enslaved to. Some of the thoughts that is coming in our life is binding us. But this morning the Lord is calling us to move forward. The Lord says keep moving. Let go of all the bad thoughts. Let go of all the things that has attacked you in the past. Put on the mind of Christ. Let the mind of Christ renew you that you may move forward to see Jesus and walk perfectly in his ways. By faith we are walking forward. By faith we are moving forward. By faith we want to see good things in our life. In Exodus chapter 12, verse 1 and 2 we read that God spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt while they were yet in Egypt. While they were yet in bondage, while they were in slavery, the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. The same Lord is moving to us. He's telling, I'm going to turn things around and I'm going to give you a new beginning. When we count on Jesus, when we put on the mind of Christ, when we fix our eyes on Jesus, things are going to turn around. That new beginning will be ours. God is about to deliver the Israelites. The Israelites were in captivity for about 430 years. They were in bondage for 430 years. But this is the eve that the Lord was going to deliver them. The Lord was going to set them free. And before he could set them free, the Lord is speaking to a Moses. He's speaking to Aaron. He's telling, I am going to give you a new beginning. Let go of all the thoughts that you had in Egypt. Let go of all of the slavery thoughts that you had and move into freedom thought. Church, we are slaves in our mind. We are not able to have the freedom. We are slaves to sin because of the past sins that has captured our mind. But the Lord is calling the Israelites for a new beginning. The same Lord is calling us and telling that I have a new beginning for you. Fix your eyes on Jesus and start something new this morning. Move forward that he will give you a new beginning, a fresh new start. He wants to redeem us from the bondage that we are in. He wants to redeem us from the slavery that we are in. The Lord wants to do great things through our ministry. I pray the Lord will enable us to build churches in remote villages. I pray that the Lord will enable us to move into unreached people group world. To establish ministries in places where the ministry has not yet gone. The Lord wants to equip us. That we may equip people to go and be a people to win the lost. The Lord wants to do great things. But fix your eyes on Jesus. Fixing our eyes on Jesus. Let's start planning for the next year of our ministry. Let's start planning for the 2018 for our own life. Let's start planning for the future. That the Lord of the future will have a hand, will have a hold in our life. That he will say, I have a plan for you for good, for, 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 for hope and for a good future. That's the plan the Lord has for us. Not to crush us down, not to kill us down. 
not to throw us down not to leave us not to betray us but he has a plan to enable us to move on keep moving forward this year is not yet over but we got to prepare for the next year right now half the year is gone don't let go of the six months that you have in front of you. Start planning, start writing the vision that God wants you to have for the next year. Start planning so that the plan, looking at Jesus, will come to pass. Many decisions we made last year. But we are not able to fulfill those things. But now if you start fixing your eyes on Jesus. And remind yourself the resolutions that you made this January. The Holy Spirit will come. And he will empower you. To fulfill. All that you promised him. As the Lord. He will, able to, he will enable you to fulfill everything that you have pronounced. He wants you to be a blessing in your family. Maybe small, simple things. You may have promised something that you would do to your children this year. But you are not able to. Fix your eyes on Jesus. And he will enable you to fulfill all that you have promised, all that you have planned. Start moving towards the commitment you made and see how the Lord will help you. Step by step, little by little. Start with your family. Whatever you have promised in the church, fulfill it. Whatever you have promised to the ministry, fulfill it. Little by little. And see how the Lord will bless you. He will enable you to move forward. The psalmist, David, he cried out saying, Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Goodness and mercy follows me all the days of my life. He says, He has anointed me with oil of gladness above my fellows. The Lord wants to anoint you with oil. Which means the Lord wants you to be the head and not the tail. But where are you? You pull yourself down. The Lord wants you to be in a higher place. But you pull yourself down. Where do you mingle? Who are your friends? Do your friends have visions? Do your friends speak the visions of God into your life? Or do they just complain and talk failures? If you are going to be mingling among the people who only utter failure words, you cannot move forward. You got to let go of certain things. Let them say anything. Doesn't matter. We don't need people who are not able to fulfill God's plan in their own life and enable you to fulfill God's plan. If their thoughts are always negative, why mingle with such people? Because the Lord has a greater plan. You've got to enable them to come up. If they are not willing to come up, move forward. Keep moving on. Because you cannot stop there. If they don't want to get into the plan of God with you, you don't get off board and stay with them. You keep going in Christ Jesus. You have started this race. Fulfill the word of God. Keep moving in this race. Keep moving forward. Help them. Hold their hand and help them come with you. If they do not come with you, you don't stop there. You let go of them and you keep moving. Because you got to fix your eyes on Jesus and keep moving forward. You do not compromise with the world. You don't just stay where they are. Keep moving forward. Because the author and the perfecter of your faith is the Lord Jesus Christ who is in front of you. Keep moving. Run your race. Persevere in your walk with the Lord. When you turn back and see, where are you today? You're supposed to be even more closer to Jesus Christ than what you were last year. You're supposed to be involved in the ministry even more than what you were last year. 
You're supposed to be doing the work of God even more compared to last year. But where are you now? Why? Because you fixed your eyes on something else. You fixed your eyes on people who are failing. You fixed your eyes on people who fail you. That's why you're not moving forward. What happened to the activities? What happened to the ministries? What happened to the service unto the Lord? What happened to the things that you used to do? Turn back and see a few years back how you were involved in the ministry. But what happened to you now? Why? Because you are not fixing your eyes on Jesus. You started fixing your eyes on things of this world, on people who are carnal, on people who fail, and then you are staying there, and now you are gossiping there, and therefore you are moving away from God himself. And how can you expect goodness and mercy to follow you all the days of your life? It cannot happen. Fix your eyes on Jesus. The Lord is calling us to fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. And keep moving forward. The psalmist David, he continues to say, For he shall anoint me with fresh oil, and I shall accomplish, I shall accomplish what has not yet been accomplished thus far this year. He says, I will do what the Lord has called me to. The Lord has called us to be a blessing. The Lord has called us to be peacemakers. The Lord has called us to give hope to this hopeless generation. The Lord has called us to be a people who will bring the joy of good news to the ones who do not have the joy. But am I Fixing my eyes on Jesus and moving forward. When you see the life of the Israelites. They left their sickness in Egypt. They left their weakness in Egypt. They left all bad memories over there. When you compare our life to them. We are carrying all our bad memories. Rather than leaving it behind, we are carrying it forward. That's why we do not have peace. We do not have joy. We do not have happiness. Check yourself. How is your family life? Do you have joy? How is your ministry life? Do you have that happiness in fulfilling what the Lord has for you? The Lord has great store, great in store for you. He has anointed you to be a blessing. They left bad memories behind. They didn't carry all those old memories of how they used to be tortured. They left everything behind and kept moving forward. Moses is enabling them to fix their eyes on Yahweh, the Lord who has brought them out. Today I want to encourage you to fix your eyes on Jesus and let go of all those bad memories. Let go of all those old thoughts. Let go of old sins. Leave it there and move forward. Forget the past and press on towards the goal that is set before you. They left their poverty behind. They didn't come out saying, I have nothing, I have nothing. They left it behind because they fixed their eyes on the, on the author and the perfecter of their faith, Yahweh. Therefore, they came out with silver and gold and wealth. And God blessed them abundantly. Today, the Lord wants to bless you. But why is he not blessing you? Because your mindset is not right. You do not have the right attitude. The Lord cannot bless us if we do not have the right attitude. The Lord wants to bless you. But you are not giving your life. You are not surrendering. You are not coming under that humility that he wants you to. He wants you to humble yourself. You have come to a season. People don't want to even wish one another. That is the season we are living in. When we were growing up, we had to open our mouth and say, praise the Lord to our elders. We have to wish them. When we see our teachers, we have to wish them good morning, good afternoon, good evening. We have to. But today, there is no discipline. Even in school, they don't care for the teachers. Church, we've got to be a different kind of people. We've got to come back to those basics. We've got to learn to obey our elders. We've got to learn to wish one another. We've got to learn to honor one another. Satan is trying to capture our mind. You can leave your sickness behind. We can leave our poverty behind. We can leave our sorrow behind. We can leave our sadness behind. We can leave all the things that is attacking our lives behind. 
when we fix our eyes on Jesus and start moving towards Him. When we start moving towards Him, the joy leaps inside us. Hope starts, builds our life. And we keep moving forward. The joy of the Lord comes. Sicknesses will have no place in our life. Poverty will not be in our life. Trials and struggles, though it comes, we will be an overcomer because we have fixed our eyes on Jesus. You'll be victorious in your life. People who see you will wonder, how is this person blessed like this? You'll be blessed beyond measure. You'll be a people who will be able to give to other people. That's the way the Lord wants to bless you. You will have silver and gold and wealth. When you fix your eyes on Jesus, you will not be in poverty mentality. The Lord will bless you. Not for your own selfish reason, but to be a blessing in the kingdom of God. To be a blessing to the poor and the needy. To be a blessing to the people in the outside world that you will take and give to the world. You will have a heart for the suffering people. When you see people suffer, you will have a heart to go and help them. That's how the Lord will change your heart when you have a heart of Jesus. You'll be compassionate. You'll move in strength. You'll move in power. You'll move in honor. You'll walk in kingdom authority. You'll use the anointing the Lord has anointed you with. Fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of your faith, that you may move forward. And you'll see the glory of the Lord. And the people will see the glory of God in you. People will see the blessings of God in your life. Once you were nobody, once you were nothing, but today you are somebody and you have so many talents. You are empowered with this glory, with this anointing, with this goodness and mercy, with this wealth, with this health, with this uh, glorious uh, kindness in your life. Why? How did this happen? How did you move to this level? Because you fixed your eyes on Jesus. But what happened now? Why are you not moving forward? The scripture says that the Lord, the people who trust the Lord will be blessed to the point that the people around them will become so jealous of them. That's how the Lord will lift you up. Your neighbors will look at you and wonder what happened to this person. How was he receiving this blessing when the whole world is suffering the blessings of the Lord? And it will not add sorrow. He will not add sorrow in your life. He will bless you. He will lift you up. You will move forward. Gone are those days of trouble. You have passed through those great valleys. And the Lord is now going to bless you abundantly. That you will see the blessings of the Lord in this world. That you will be a people to give to several missionaries who will go and do the work of the Lord. That's how the Lord wants to turn your life around. But first fix your eyes on Jesus. That he will help you. Every head's bowed. What is your meditation every day? What are those thoughts going through your mind every day? If you get into negative thoughts, I tell you those negative thoughts multiply and soon destroy your mind. It's like cancer. Anything you see will be negative. Everything will be negative. You will never have the joy at all. We are in a season that Satan is stealing our joy totally, completely. You have become a prey, you have become a victim in the hands of Satan because you let loose those thoughts to negativism. But today make up your mind, I'll fix my eyes on Jesus. The author and the perfecter of my faith. I will fix my eyes on Jesus. Only then you will have joy. Only then you will have peace. Only then you will have happiness. Only then you will move forward. Only then you will have the joy of the Lord. Otherwise your life is gone. Sad for you. You may have everything, but you cannot enjoy. You may have a family, but you may not have peace. Why? Because you have not fixed your eyes on Jesus. Fix your eyes on Jesus. See how you will turn things around. In everything that you touch, there will be goodness and joy. 
How many of you say, I'm going to rededicate myself? I'm going to fix my eyes on Jesus. Just lift your hand. I want to pray for you. Yes, I see a few hands. Yeah, lift it up. And tell the Lord, Father, I pray that you will touch me, Lord. I will ruin myself, Lord. Whatever I do, I'm not having joy. You may be involved in ministry, but it's of no use. It's not helping you. It won't help others. If you don't fix your eyes on Jesus. Father, I pray and commit your children into your mighty hands. As we commit to fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. I pray that you will enable us to have the mind of Christ and move forward, Lord. Let your goodness and joy be our part. Be with us as we fast and pray. Remove all sorrow. Remove all restless situation in our life. Heal us, Lord, from our sicknesses, from our burdens. Deliver us from all evil that we may follow you every day. Let your name be glorified. In the name of our Lord Jesus, I pray. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit rest and abide upon each of us forevermore.